Welcome back. We've made it to level three in the Pathfinder Adventure card game. We're working in the Dragon's Demand storybook. So in this scenario, we're off to the Monastery of St. Crixus. Uh, we're trying to find out who is in charge of all this craziness going on. As far as leveling up from our previous scenario, for completing level two, we all got to pick a role for our characters, for Valeros, uh, taking on the Drunken Avenger. Uh, so I've got some extra abilities going on here, but so far none of them are going to come into effect. For his hero point, I've given him a bigger hand size uh, so I can have better options because I was getting a little limited with just four cards in hand. And for Sione, she has taken on the role of a dream weaver. And for her hero point, I've given her another card, another blessing I think will be helpful with her. And as she levels up, some better things will be available to us. As for what's going on in this scenario, the danger is gonna be a mummy. We'll take a look at him. Combat of 14 plus six, so we're now for each number or adventure sign, we're adding three, so it's gonna be a beast for getting through these scenarios now. We no villain in this one, so we've got four closing henchmen. For setup, display the story bane planner rift and mark it once for each location. So I've got this sitting down here with four markers. So in this one, we need a combat of 17 to, to defeat or an arcane divine of nine. Cannot be evaded. Before acting, a lo local character summons and encounters the danger, the mummy, and the difficulty to defeat is increased by the number of locations and we have four in play at the moment. And of course, in order to win, we are gonna to have to remove all the markers from the planner rift. So when you encounter the danger, if you have the monk trait, or if you reveal an Aurori card, you may evade. It's a little spoiler. I don't think we're going to be able to evade at all in this game. Whenever you defeat basically one of the henchmen other than the Grioth, we'll be putting it into a henchman pile instead of banishing it. At the end of your turn, if the hours level is 3, or if you close a location on your turn, you may encounter the planar rift, when you defeat the planar rift, remove a marker from it, plus an additional marker if a local character banishes an arcane or divine card. And once again, to win, we must remove the markers from the planar rift. At the end of the scenario, note the number of henchmen in the henchman pile for the setup of scenario 3B, Dragon Slayers. And if we get through all this, we'll get a hero point. So our locations, We've got the library, on your check to against a spell or a book boon, add a d6. To close, we need intelligence or knowledge of eight. And when closed, may heal a, a discarded or buried book card. In the ruins, when a monster is undefeated, shuffle a new monster into the location. To close, summon and defeat the danger. And when closed, shuffle a new monster into another location. For the shrine, on your divine checks, I add two. To close, succeed at a wisdom or divine eight check. And when closed, you may draw a new blessing. And at the tower, start of your turn, you may examine the top card of a distant location. To close, succeed at a wisdom or perception seven check. And when closed, you may examine the top card of a distant location. So a lot of wisdom checks on there, which is a weak point for both our characters. So closing locations is going to be an issue. So let's get started with drawing our, starting our hands. So we'll get five cards for Valeros needing a sword. And we have the flaming mace. So we've got no sword here. So we'll draw another five cards. And we have two swords now, so we've got a starting hand. And we'll shuffle these back in our deck. 
And for Sioni, getting six cards, looking for a spell, and we definitely have a few. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got Sioni starting in the library, because that's where she'll have her best chance for finding some cool stuff. And Boleros in the Ruins, which is probably the only place he has a chance of closing. So we will start with the hour. It's a level zero with no effect. Take a look in the ruin. Finding a cure spell, Wisdom Divine of six. We are a D6 for Wisdom, and we need a six to get this one. Halfway there, so the spell will fly away. And that would have been nice to get to be able to heal some people. And I will discard a card and then draw up to five. Getting some armor for Sioni's turn. Level one card. For the hour on your check, you may discard a card to reroll one die showing a one or two. And we'll go ahead and explore. Finding some Caltrops, needing Dexterity or Disable to acquire. We've got a Dex of a D6 plus one. So we've just found some Caltrops. So when a local character encounters a monster, discard and they may evade. Since we have seven cards, we'll go ahead and discard a Blessing to explore again. Finding a Wand of Flame. So Intelligence Arcane of 9 or Wisdom Divine of 11. Pretty nice powers. So let's see if we can get this. Our Arcane is a D12 plus 2. So we'll just go with the D12, adding 2 to this. After the long roll, we end up with a 9 which is just enough to get it. So cool, we'll add a Wand of Flame to our hand. For your combat check, bury your banish to roll 3d6 plus the level. You may additionally discard a spell to add your arcane or divine skill. During recovery, if proficient, discard this card. You may succeed at an arcane 11 or divine 13 check to recharge it instead. And once again, we have too many cards in hand, and I really don't want to use my last blessing, so I'll just discard my caltrips to end turn. And then for Valeros, on this hour when you heal, you may heal an additional card. Take a look in the ruins, finding a wood golem, combat of 18, immune to attack, cold, mental, and poison, vulnerable to fire. The check to defeat has the fire trait. Ignore this monster's immunities. Before acting, succeed at a constitution or fortitude six check or suffer 1d4 combat damage and the scourge wounded. So first we need a fortitude check, which is a d8 plus two. Need a six. End up with an eight, so we're good there. And now for combat. Got our Worm Smite, so it is going to have a D8 plus 2, and then our D10 plus 3, and I'll go ahead and reload this for another D4, and we'll go with that. So we're adding 5 to this die roll, getting 7, 14, 19. So just enough to beat, defeat the Wood Golem. Should have done this earlier. I'll go ahead and display our armor. Oops. And end our turn, drawing two cards. Getting our sword back and a shield. For Sioni's turn, we have a Blessing with a 3, 
So at the end of our turn, we may encounter the planner rift. And after your exploration, you may move to a random location. All right, for our encounter, we're gonna find the volcanic storm. Intelligence, wisdom, arcane, divine of 11. See how cool for your combat check, banish to use arcane or divine plus 3d6. If you would fail this check against a monster you encounter, you may evade it instead. So that looks like a pretty awesome spell. For arcane, I'm a d12 plus two. And I really want that. So we are gonna go ahead and bless this. So we need an 11, adding two to this roll. Getting a 1416, so we've acquired a volcanic storm. In the turn, we're gonna go after the planar rift. So before acting, we will encounter the danger. So Mummy Deers comes over, immune to cold, mental, poison, vulnerable to fire. And a volcanic storm has a little bit of fire with it, so we'll be adding four to this roll. So we'll get our d12 plus two, plus three d6. And we'll be adding six to this roll, looking for a 20. We've got 13, 14, 15, 16, plus six more, so a 22. So we beat the mummy there. So now we get to move on and encounter this card. Need a combat of 17 or an arcane divine of nine. I think we're just gonna go for the arcane divine, getting a d12 plus two. Valeros will bless this, giving another d12. So we're adding two, looking for a nine. Getting a nine plus or two, so 11. And we will go ahead and banish our, an arcane card to be able to remove an additional token. So that turn went kinda well, I think. We'll end turn by shuffling in our spell because of our upgraded power and draw two cards. Getting a lightning bolt and our cat. So for Valeris. For the hour on each check, the first blessing play to bless may be played freely. We will encounter finding our chemist. So one of our story banes, combat of 17 or craft diplomacy of not going to try. Uh, before acting, each local character suffers one acid damage. Cards discarded as damage are discarded randomly. If undefeated, each local character suffers 1d4 poison damage and the scourged poisoned. So for the acid damage, let's see what our armor does. If you suffer any damage, you may recharge to reduce it by one, so we'll do that. And then for our fight, we will use our Worm Smite, getting us a D10 plus three, D8 plus two, and we'll reload it for a D4. And no blessings to go around, so we are adding three to this roll, needing a 17. Getting a nine, getting a 12. So we needed a lot more than that. So we're gonna take five damage. For that much damage, our shield's not gonna help, so we're just gonna lose all the cards in our hand. We'll take 1d4 damage that won't matter, but just to see how bad it would have been. Another two damage, we don't have any more cards in hand. And now we are poisoned. So after you reset, recharge a random card. 
When you would heal any number of cards, you may remove this scourge instead. So from our ability, we will recharge our sword. One, two, three, four, five, drawing five cards. And then we'll recharge a random card. So I'm glad I upped my hand size because now at least I still had some options. And we kept her sword. And because of the rune, when a monster is undefeated, shuffle a new monster into the location. So we'll just pick one at random here, along with her story bane, and shuffle those into the location. And then passing turn to Sioni. So on this check, against a spell, add a d4. See what's in here. Find some exploding runes, arcane divine of nine or disable of 11. So we're not examining, we are not perceptive. All right, so arcane of nine, or d12 plus two. So just our die roll, adding two to this. Getting a 14. So we've made it past the runes and we'll get rid of this barrier. And we will pass turn for Valeris's turn. No effect. He will move over to the library and encounter a card, finding a blessing. Needing divine melee or ranged of seven. Our ranged is a D8. So I'll just roll the die, hoping for a seven or eight. Getting a two. We'll say goodbye to the blessing. With our special power, we'll recharge our shield and then draw a card. Getting full plate, then we will Randomize these and recharge a random card due to being poisoned. So we still have our main sword. Pass turn to Sioni. Got another blessing of three here. So there's a chance we could end this game at the end of the turn. So when you would examine the top card of a location, you may examine the top two cards instead. I'm going to use Soothing Word, banish to heal a local character a card, and remove and or remove a Scourge from them. So we'll go ahead and put that into Fix Later, and we'll get rid of the Scourge on Valeros. We'll go ahead and encounter the next card. Finding a minion, charisma, diplomacy, or knowledge of seven. Our charisma is a d12 plus two. I'm not going to waste any cards because we're going to need it at the end of the turn. So we're adding two to this roll. The dice are not with me today. So we ended up with a five. So if undefeated, suffer the scourge exhausted, then summon and encounter the danger. So exhausted. You may play no more than one boon. Oh, that's not good. Start of your move step, you may end your turn to remove this scourge. Well, so much for possibly winning this round. So out comes the mummy. We need a 20 and we're rolling, we're allowed to use one boon on our turn. So we do have the fire bolt, and according to the FAQ, it does have the fire trait. So for the combat check, we'll get our D12 plus two, plus two D6. And since we have a roll card, we can add another D6. And we'll see what this does for us. We're adding two to this. Getting 10, 13, plus your two from the card, plus another four because this was fire. 
So that gets us to 19, so we are one short. Our bodyguard will jump in the way. And when undefeated, bury your discards and suffer the scourge wounded. So discards are going to get buried. And in addition to being exhausted, we are wounded. Start of your turn, discard the top card of your deck. When you would heal any number of cards, you may remove the scourge instead. So the mummy goes away. And the minion will get shuffled back into the deck. And these two cards will be shuffled into our deck. And then we will draw three cards. Getting a Staff of Minor Healing, Force Missile, and our Allosaurus. For Valeris' turn, on your non-attack combat check, check, add one. We'll move over to the Ruins. Take a look at the encounter, finding an armor of insult. Constitution diplomacy, fortitude of eight. Their fortitude is a D8 plus two. Getting a five. So the armor of insults was insulted and left. And we will call it turn. We'll discard a card and then draw up to five. Getting a blessing and a guide. For Sione's turn, since she's wounded, start a turn, discard the top card of your deck. So we're losing the Volcanic Storm, our best card. For the hour, on your check against an undead card, add a d6. That would be nice if we were going after the mummy. We'll use our Staff of Minor Healing to recharge to heal a character, and instead of healing, a card will remove the Wounded Scourge. And then at the start of our move step, we will end our turn to remove being exhausted. In our end of turn effects, we have five cards, so we'll draw one card. Getting Soothing Word. So for Valeris, no effect for this hour. Go ahead and don the full plate. And take a look in the ruins, finding a short sword, needing strength or melee or stealth of four. D10 plus two. Getting a oops, seven total. So we've got a sword. We will end our turn, applying our effects to recharge the mace. We'll discard the short sword and draw a card. Getting our great axe back to Sioni. If you are at a wild location, you may discard a card to explore. The library is urban. We'll use Soothing Word to heal her storm back. We'll shuffle that in the deck. And then Explore. Not many cards left. Found a skeleton. Need a 16. Immune to cold, mental, and poison. Vulnerable to bludgeoning. We'll use a Lightning Bolt, which will give us our Arcane D12 plus 2, plus 3D6. And if there were some after-acting powers, we would be able to ignore that. And we'll go ahead and recharge our cat to add a D4, just for good measure. So we're looking for a 16. We're adding 
two to this roll. So 11, 12, 17, 19, plus a few more, dead skeleton. And we'll call that a turn. Shuffle these into our deck. Then we'll draw three cards. And our three cards. Oops. It'll be a wall of light, blessing, and our volcanic storm. So pass turn to Valeros. On your check to close your guard, add a d4. So we can only hope this is our Bane, but it's not. It's an Unseen Sentinel, Combat 11. Before acting, succeed at a Perception 7 check, or suffer 4th damage, and the difficulty to defeat is increased by 3. So our Perception, we don't have, so that means it's automatically a D4. So we've got nothing for that, so we're going to suffer 4th damage, so that'll be our Great Axe there. So the difficulty will go up three, so we need a 14. We'll use our sword, getting our D10 plus three, a D8 plus two, and we'll reload for a D4. That's all we've got, so we need a 14, adding three to this. So we get 15 on the dice, 18 total, Sentinel goes away. And we'll call it a turn. We'll recharge our Great Axe and draw two cards. So getting some armor and our sword back. For Sioni, if you're at a wild location, which we're not, you may discard a card to explore. Take a look what we've got here. We've got the Grioth. So combat is going to be a 16. It's immune to cold. We're going to go ahead and use a force missile, which will give us our D12 plus 2. Plus 2D4. Send in our dinosaur to give us another D6. The layers will... Bless it for another D12. So we're adding two to this roll, needing a 16. And yes, I'm not trusting my dice today. And this is why. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, 14, 15, 16. So, whew, barely made it. So he is now dead. Oh. Banish the rest of the cards in that location. And attempt to close. Needing intelligence or knowledge of 8. Our knowledge is a D8 plus 1. For possibly a little bit of overkill, we'll have Valeros plus this on any check to close or guard. Recharge to add a D12. We need an eight, adding one to this. So we were able to close the location. You may heal a discarded or buried book card. I don't think any of these were a book. Nope. She'll immediately run over to the Ruin. Since she closed the location, she can encounter the Plane Rift, which means first to fight with the Mummy, who is vulnerable to fire. And we have a Storm in hand. So we'll be adding four to this, plus her Divine, plus two, plus three D6. So I've got one blessing to use, but I'm going to save it for the rift. So we'll go with this die roll. 
because it's vulnerable to fire, we're adding four in our ability two, so we're adding six to this roll, needing a total of 20. Getting 12, 15, 18, plus enough to defeat here. And then either Combat of 17 or Arcane Divine of 9. So we got a D12 plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and bless this to get another D12. Adding two to this, and we need a nine. Got a 14 plus two, which will get rid of a third token. So now it's, do I want to end the game now or keep playing? And I'm going to make it easy and just go ahead and banish this card to take off the fourth token, which will let us get to our victory condition to win the scenario, remove all markers from the planar rift. So each hero is going to get a hero point. Hope you're enjoying this series. If so, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.